all over the internet there is one driver claimed to be the best longest most forgiving of 2024 and it is of course the ping g430 10k driver i think it's a good driver this go 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 it's got the carry but hear me out i honestly think there's a better one i was reading the review from the guys at golf wrx the other day and i think they are the best club reviewers in the world i think they leave no stone unturned and they say this is the most wanted driver of 2024 but personally i also have a fitted pxg 0311 driver this isn't the tour head this is the standard black ops driver and this can also offer 10k inertia a lot of people don't know that because PXG don't go shouting the head off about it. But this is fitted in my specs, just like the Ping G430 10K Max is. Which one's gonna perform best for me? Stay tuned and find out. We're gonna test it out here on what can only be said as a gorgeous Woolly Park Golf Club. And we're also gonna put these two titans of drivers head to head here in the studio to see just what numbers we can get on some severe, awful, shocking golf swings, because that's what these drivers are all about. Forgiveness, distance, and I'm not gonna lie, they're quite expensive. I've got to get that in there. So let's kick things off with not performance, but looks, sound, and feel, because I think that's vitally important when you're spending the amount of money you spend on these new drivers. I was blown away when I saw the price of the Ping G430 Max 10K, and then uh, we all know PXG do make, in fact, they do make budget drivers now, but this certainly isn't one of them. Both these clubs are gonna set you back around 500 pound up to 550 pound depending if you have some shaft upgrades in there or whatnot. But both of these clubs offer exceptional fitting, so you can get these fitted to within an inch of a ball flight that you want, then you just have to hit them well. Personally, I think the ping feels a lot better than the standard G430. I quite like the feel of the G430 LS. To me, that feels fantastic. The reason behind that is that carbon fly wrap, which is on the crown of this club. I absolutely despise the um turbulators turbulate i call them dragonfly but this is the oh. dragonfly here isn't it i despise the look of those they're not for me do they help you with club head speed potentially i don't know we'll check out that in the studio but then on the bottom you can see we've also got lots of carbon here as well alongside a huge tungsten weighting on the back i saw a peter finch video the other day and peter said he would marry this driver if he could okay okay it must be good then so let's start this on the left hand side fade it back over that corner nicely and looks can be not only deceiving because this does look like quite a big clumbersome driver but they can also be forgiven if a driver performs exceptionally well some of the best golfers in the world are using this driver some of the guys that hit it a long 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 way are using this driver so although it is a mega forgiving club it's not necessarily a club for hackers or beginners or high handicappers or whoever Chris would term them as. Sorry, Chris. But... You've been known. Let's see, over the corner. We've not been swinging great today, so it's a good day for this test. And that, straight away, is a ball flight that I absolutely love. A big high fade down the middle of this fairway. You can see strike-wise, it's just a little bit low heel, so hopefully the 10K inertia here would help us with that. Now, if we look at the PXG, you will start to see. You look at the magic assistant there. Oh, you've missed that one, though. You will start to see a little bit of a difference on this because for me, as I look down at this PXG driver, if we can get the ball on that tee. I, I can't remember the last time I put a ball on the tee and it stayed there. But I think the PXG looks phenomenal down at the golf ball. It's got that carbon crown. It actually morphs in nicely with a little bit of a black piano finish on top there. Very reminiscent of tailor-made drivers of old before they introduced the Infinity Crown. Then we look at the bottom, there's more carbon. There's actually sp sporadic weight in here, and that's where if you go and get fitted in certain situations, these can be fitted into 10K inertia. This one isn't, because I believe more weight's in the heel there just to help out, but both of these drivers are set in the same settings as much as you can do. So, how much easier is one of them to play? Is one of them better? Golf WRX think the ping is the best by far. And I think personally, the PXG is certainly a club that you can't, I mean, I've hit that terribly and that's just down the right hand side. I can't wait to get down there and see the difference in distance there because I've hit the ping pretty good. And I've, I mean, that was, that was really, really, really bad. Nearly a Dave. It was nearly a Dave. So forgiveness is the name of the game. Let's get down there 
let's see where these are. And then let's test it on some slightly more difficult tee shot holes, because this is wide open and there's some holes here at Woolley Park Golf Club, which uh, it's fair to say have my number. So interestingly, we have a ball in the right hand rough here just behind the bunker. That is the PXG. And we can talk about ball speed, we can talk about spin rate, we can talk about everything else in the studio. But when it comes to it out on the golf course, you can see here we have the ping that's in the middle of the fairway, a very similar distance. So realistically, how much difference is there there? For me, I'm a huge believer that it's more important out here on the golf course. The ping has to take the lead in this video here because to be honest, it's bang next to the center line of the fairway. So what difference really is there? Let's try a drivable par four this time over tight out of bounds and see potentially which one could get closer to the flag and which one could cost us nearly five pound now. Ouch. And you see, this is where forgiving drivers would have failed in the past. We've got to carry out of bounds and it's into the wind. So as soon as you start getting a mega forgiving driver, Usually you'd think of one thing, you'd think of spin rate being way too high if you struck it out of the middle, but you don't actually get that with either the Ping G430 10K Max or the PXG0311 Black Ops. I can't believe I got both those names right fully first time, but we'll go PXG first this time. We have to basically take it there. So quite a difficult tee shot. It's into the wind a little bit and you want a big high fade here. I think both these drivers suit a nice big high fade perfectly because although they're forgiving, you can keep the spin rate down because of the multi-material design that they have, which I think, again, it's a hats off to both these brands, really, because when you're talking about a driver market that tailor-made Callaway, they've dominated for so long, I think potentially for the two best drivers of the year battling it out to not be tailor-made or Callaway, potentially, is huge for the golf industry. It's exactly what Bob Parsons probably wants and the guys over at Ping. So without any further ado, how close can we get? It's reachable, we just need good ones. Right, that's necky, but it's the perfect line. I haven't heard anything. If I was a betting man, I'd say front bunker. We look at that strike location. I'm quite pleased with how I'm swinging today, not because it's perfect and not because it's good, but because when you're testing for giving drivers like this, I always like having, um, the normal stuff is what we'll say, the normal stuff. So Chris, you've actually gained both these drivers for quite some time. What are your thoughts on them? Because I've had the PXG in play for the best part of a month now, but you actually used the PXG recently and had the ping in play in Orlando. Yeah, massive improvements, I think, first of all, from PXG, again, sound and feel-wise does feel good. Again, forgiveness-wise, good. But for me, ping, I've used ping, so I don't mind the look of it. I mean, obviously, when we talk about looks behind the golf ball, obviously, I think the PXG is fantastic. Again, the ping looks a little bit bigger, and we know he's got those turbulators on the top, but for me, I'm used to that, so I'm not too worried, but it has really shown forgiveness for me. So although they're a little bit bigger and they are forgiving clubs, still good enough for PJ pros. And quite interestingly, I do think that ping has the reputation that a lot of people want as well. So that's why potentially you may see pings in more people's hands than PXG. So can we get this one over there? A much better flight, much higher flight, the perfect movement as well. I'd be surprised if that one didn't make the green. Let's get down there and let's see exactly which one's potential there. I'd be amazed if the PXG was, but I would expect to ping with that strike to be up there. Then we're going to jump inside and see what the differences are for numbers. And so I got this idea from looking at Golf WRX's review of the Ping G430 10K Max. And I think they are the best in the industry when it comes to club reviews, because like I said, they leave no stone unturned. They hit thousands and thousands of shots. So it's kind of tongue in cheek that I would make this video saying I disagree with you and I think it's the PXG. But what I really wanted to do was put these drivers head to head in my hands and see what the differences really were. Don't just base this video on the shots that I'm hitting here. Base it on the experience I have from using these golf clubs, both in America when we went for the PGA show and here in the UK for probably the last couple of months. So interestingly, we have the PXG in the front left hand bunker. You can see that it was a much lower flight because of how healy it was. So it's probably pitched back here and then released out into the bunker. So not a bad shot for a drivable par four with a bad strike. And then we have the ping, which is actually shorter, but it's probably landed more here anyway. So realistically, two very similar shots. 
The PXG again wasn't a great strike, but shows how forgiving it potentially is. And the ping, I struck that really well. So I would have maybe anticipated that to be a little bit longer, but both of these are in play. I'm probably gonna give that the PXG. So we're tied at one apiece out here on the golf course. Let's jump in the studio. Let's see exactly what our findings have been over the last few months testing these clubs. Head cover game, which one, Chris? Yeah, I'm gonna go up here. I like the stealth style look behind that. Let's jump in, let's see what we've seen over the last few months, and then we'll settle this out here on the golf course. That was boxing, if you didn't know. Yeah. So we'll kick things off with the PXG0311 Black Ops. And the, for me, the beauty about this club is the fitting capabilities. Yes, you can go and get fitted for the ping, you can get the right loft, the right lie angle, you can even get the right weighting in the back and the right shaft. But I think the ability to make this driver what it is, is for me why I enjoy it so much. The fitting process was, let's be fair, second to none. So what differences are we going to see here in the studio? It's a great start for the pitch. A little bit high, but a little bit floaty. I struck that really, really nicely as well. So it's gonna be really interesting to see just exactly what differences they are. What differences are they gonna be in spin rate? What difference are we gonna see in ball speed? That was a little bit high spin, but a 159 ball. Remember, both these clubs do come with a tour option and of course, with a low spin option, the GV430 LS, and of course, the Black Ops Tour 1. One thing to say, the PXG sounds incredible. The whole range does. So what I like about the G430 10K Max, to be honest, looking down at it, not a lot. I think the carbon does add a lot, but I hate the turbulators here. They are designed to help you with a little bit of aerodynamics. For me, I would do away with them. I'd offer it without them and just see potentially what you can get. How does it compare to the PXG? That felt delightful. Let's see what we get here. 270 ish for me would be a nice carry. 273 releasing out just shy of 300. And that one was spinning nicely. That was spinning down at just sub 2000. 161 club, no, ball, sorry. Imagine 161 club speed. Be an absolute beast. Really nice peeling away flights. We've been having that, to be fair, with all the shots we have been hitting. Spin was up a little bit more on that one. Still up there at 270. Go on. That's a nice 270 carry. Again, running up 290 that time. Spin a little bit higher. Just as I say, that ball flight pops up a little bit, but it's still going to be around that 270 carry. Right guys, I'm gonna jump in and out of both the Ping G430 10K Max and the Black Ops 0311 PXG. I don't know why I said that in that order. It was a total wrong order, wasn't it? But 0311, I believe that 0311, I think it's pronounced, but we're gonna jump in and out of them both, test them so there's no favoritism. And then we're gonna discuss numbers for all these clubs. I've stepped on that one, but it's gone left. Oh yeah, go on, go on, keep going, go! Oh, we're never gonna hit it 300, Bobby, are we? We're never gonna hit it 300. Go, 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 it's got the carry. I see why Peter Finch said he'd marry it, wow. 164 ball speed, that's ridiculous. I'm just like launching these. Now this, is, this has turned into what it shouldn't turn into. Just a ridiculous long drive attempt. But we've got 300 on string now, I'm out of breath. That's got to be deep. That's got to be deep, go on. Go on. Another one. <laughs> oh, Bobby. Bobby. Oh, we can't get this to 300 though, can we? Oh, don't turn. 
That was so well struck. That's pitching in the net at two, that's got 20 yards to go in the air. And so guys, looking at all the averages for these numbers, although the Ping G430 10K Max did take the longest drive of the day by four yards, maybe five yards actually, it didn't actually get the longest averages. Longest average carry for me was 277, which was the PXG, and the longest total average was 289. You see ball speeds are very similar, spin rates are very similar, but the PXG just managed to edge it on averages with well over 50 shots hit. Now I'm off to the hospital for another back operation. Okay, so very interesting numbers there and very consistent numbers as well. That's one thing which I have to say both these drivers do offer. They offer consistency and forgiveness. If I was picking between these two drivers, these are both fitted identically in my specs for said driver. I don't think I could do it on performance because to be honest, they perform very, very similar. They're a similar price. It would have to be on something else. It would have to be on the looks, on the sex appeal, on the sounds. Let me hit these first. I'm going to tell you which one. You can probably tell already, but very, very impressed by these. And I think Golf WRX have hit the nail on the head when it comes to the Ping being the most wanted of 2024, because I do think Ping still hold high regard in a lot of golfers' minds, especially mid to high handicap golfers. And the way that greenkeeper was going then, but was safe. And that is a fantastic ball flight for me. I absolutely love that kind of peeling shot just off the left-hand side. That was probably the best PXG shot we have hit in this video. And it's the sound, it's the feel, it's the whole thing behind the PXG, the process of getting the fitting, getting the black box. To me, it's, it's very enjoyable. And I play golf because I enjoy it and I want good experiences. Ping do offer that, but not quite in the same league for me. I think it doesn't look as good, it doesn't sound as good, but well, those are all subjective things. They're all things which, let's be honest, Chris disagrees with, you guys might disagree with, and other people may agree with me with. So, say with more. Guys, thank you so much for watching. That's another lovely big high fade down the middle of this fifth hole. If you've enjoyed that, smash that subscribe button below. Golf-related videos every single day 